Millions of years ago, before our species came to be the only humans around on the planet, we had cousins and ancestors, other human species that lived on Earth. We know this because we have seen the remains and we have excavated them and we have managed to trace the evolution of Homo sapiens to a certain extent. We know that there have been other species before that resembled Homo sapiens and species that Homo sapiens descended from. We have fossils for several of these and now two such tiny hominin fossils have gone to space. Hominins are a different subspecies to us and they were the ancestors of the genus Homo or humans and also Pan which includes chimpanzees. There are no hominins today but just their descendants. South African born billionaire Timothy Nash fit both of these little fossils in a cigar shaped tube and launched it on a virgin galactic flight and reached the edge of space and the scientific community is extremely unhappy and angry. On 8th of September this year, six men flew up to 88 kilometers of altitude, effectively reaching the edge of space. Three of these were private tourists, including the billionaire Nash, and three were crew. The fossils to be sent on the flight were chosen by Lee Berger, who actually played a key role in the discovery of both the fossils. One fossil was discovered by his nine-year-old son then back in 2008 and it was the collarbone of a two million year old Australopithecus sediba. The other one was a thumb from Homo naledi, a species we still don't fully understand which goes back 300,000 years and this was discovered in 2013, this fossil. Berger released a statement saying that the journey of these fossils to space is humanity's appreciation of the contribution of our ancestors while his son added that these hominins could have never dreamed when they were alive of taking such a journey to space. This, of course, immediately drew ire from various quarters for various reasons. First of all, we don't know what those hominins thought and we don't know if they ever thought about escaping Earth's gravity and going out into space. That attributes too many characteristics to hominins that are not scientifically compatible with what we know about them yet. Then, what is the scientific value of such a flight? It is not quantifiable or present. What scientific benefit would there be in carrying two pieces of fossil to space? Any glitch in the flight would have destroyed these specimens which are extremely rare. There are only two individuals of this Australopithecus species whose bits of bones we've discovered. We have more bones of Homo naledi but we have no clue where they fit in the Homo species tree. The effect of space flight on these bits of bones are unclear and such fossils are not just valuable scientifically but also culturally. They are a part of a nation's heritage and humanity's heritage. This raises questions of ethics because fossils are remains of our ancestors, all of our ancestors and thus are treated with respect by the scientific community. It goes a bit further than that too. The billionaire Timothy Nash owns large areas of land in Africa where the Berger father and son duo made their discoveries. They own the land that these fossils are present in. And Nash is longtime friends with Lee Berger, the father, and they've been friends for over a decade. Because of this relationship, Berger has access to ancient hominin fossils that many other anthropologists would kill for. So the entire thing to them and to the rest of the scientific community just reeks of entitlement and privilege. It mirrors how anthro and paleo sciences were treated during colonial times with European colonists just taking whatever they found in Africa and other places. What's more, to carry these specimens to space, permits were required from South Africa and Berger's permit was approved by the South African Heritage Resources Agency. They did this by categorizing these fossils as paleontological remains rather than human remains. So this immediately also set off a controversy and further raised questions about what exactly makes a human. At what point in evolution did a species become a human species rather than another type of primate? This whole event of taking these fossils to space has raised a lot of questions among scientists and has brought 
homin and controversies and debates to the mainstream light right now there is nothing that can be done at the moment because the fossils have flown but many scientists have very credible questions about experts in their own field and just like with all other branches of science and research questioning the motives actions and results of your scientific colleagues is a part of what makes science grow